Gosh, it's raining out there, and welcome to another session uh, of Shed Sessions. Um, and today we're going to head out and do something on the barbecue. Although, as I stress, the weather's not brilliant. I got this fabulous simple dish. Um, so we're going to cook sea bass. We got two wild sea bass fillets here, which are looking pretty damn good. We're going to cook them in the barbie on about 250 for about eight minutes. I'll see the plant so you get the, the great smell and infusion of the uh, cedar coming through. But first of all, um, we've got to marinate. Actually, let me tell you about the other ingredients as well. So that is going to go on to orzo. And orzo, you might think, well, what is orzo? Well, it's a grain of pasta. And orzo in Italian means barley. So it looks like a grain of barley. And we've got about 60 grams a portion there. And we're going to, go, going to do it with my favourite sort of July summer vegetables, as well as cauliflower, broad beans and peas. You just can't go wrong with broad beans and peas. I can eat them raw or I can eat them cooked, but they're so delightful. Then we've got a lettuce, it's a little gem, and we've got some spring onions. We've got an onion, we've got a bit of roast garlic. So I've roasted the garlic to take a little bit of the pungency out of it. And then I've got some vegetable stock which is pea stock in the main, organic lemon, I've got some oregano, I've got one of my Lancashire cheeses, so this is one of my homemade cheeses, um, ah so this is a two week old, it's very smelly, aged Lancashire, okay, so it's, it's also cider wash, so cider I think goes really well with this sort of dish, um, so it's a bit smelly, not too smelly, but it's a bit smelly, um, and we're going to grate a little bit of that into our orzo. Okay, I'm also going to add some mint. So, first and foremost, we need to marinate up um, the sea bass. And it's wild sea bass, so it's wonderful stuff. So, I'm going to just double wrap the cling film um, and make sure we've got enough of it. I'm, I'm being cautious with that pan boiling away there. Okay, so pop our sea bass like a saw, and I like a saw. Actually, let's do let's just do it lengthways, and then I can wrap. Yeah, that's a bit more intelligent than I can wrap that round. Okay, so we need to grate some zest of lemon onto the sea bass fillet. So a good covering of lemon and then I've got some modern sea salt here so I'm going to give it a good sprinkle of sea salt on either fill it like so and then a little touch of sugar because the sugar just adds a little bit of sweetness when you just cut through the salt and then we've got some oregano and just get that off the leaf and sprinkle that just nicely on there and I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on so it'll just stick that where I put the white wine on not going to put any heavy acidity on like lime, lemon juice or lime juice because I've got the zest on for flavour and I don't want to I don't want to start baking or cooking with the acidity it'll change the uh, the texture um, and we'll go from being translucent to opaque and I don't want that so just put a little bit sprinkle of white wine on which is a much milder acidity and then just cover the sea bass up like so and we're going to leave that for 20 minutes and I'll put it on the, the cedar plank just so it's out of the way and I need 150 grams of broad beans so you can see our broad just thought you need to see our broad bean pod is it's one of the wonders of the world what are nice a broad bean pods done on the barbecue so I'll perhaps just chuck a few in 
and just see how they turn out, you know, just for just for a little look. So I'll open that one up. I did these ones as a starter at uh, the Three Fishes many, many years ago, um, like a nibble, but uh, it's so hard, I think, to get broad beans consistent through the season it's just and maybe that's rightly so you know that you you don't have something that's so beautiful all the time because otherwise life wouldn't be it just isn't real is it so i'll open those up that one's going to sit on its side and you have to cut that little bit off the end which might help me a little bit but okay um and then this one i can just pop into there so when we put the sea bass in just for a bit of fun We'll see how those cook alongside. And I suppose, you know, you could do the same with your peas. These, gosh, when I was a commie doing these, I used to eat more than I uh, put in the pods. So you can see, and I made the, uh, the pea stock with the veg stock here with these, a little bit of celery and a little bit of onion, um, but mainly pea, pea pods. Okay, so you can see what we're doing there. Okay, so we've got those. So those just go in straight into our water. And then I'm going to put a bit of salt in. See, abracadabra, and you need to get them out, he says. Okay, so a minute or so. And, and I've got some ice water here at the side. So I can just pop them straight in. We're about there now. Okay, so we can get rid of that. Um, pop the pan over there. And then... Just pour those into our colander. Bring them back up onto the top. And now we've just got to take those. Let's get a little... Can you see those? Ah. Oh. But I'm going to do something with those for you. So um, we don't need to. We don't need to pod all of them, but we'll do a few because I was going to just do a little, a little interesting thing with the uh, shells, so we don't waste the shells. Um, but I, I like the texture of some with the, you know, with the husk or the shell on, and and some out. So. You can imagine if you're doing this for 250 people. So that's um, a good two thirds of them podded. And I've got those pods here. Okay, so we'll pop all our, the rest of the peas and beans into this small bowl here. And they're just gonna get popped into our orzo as we go along. Okay, so those are those and what I need to do now is get our pan on and pop him on number eight, give it a little bit of heat. I'm going to put a little bit of mild chili olive oil in the bottom, uh, which is about 25 mil. Then um, I'll finally chop an onion. I remember we're doing two portions, about 60 grams a portion. I don't want it too fine, the onion. Okay. And these are small New Seasons English onions, which are very easy to chop. When you get those great big Spanish onions, size of a watermelon, they're tricky. They're tricky, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, when we used to be, <laughs> when we were training the chefs, we'd always give them, as one of my trials I always used to do, chopping an onion, I'd always give them this huge onion, because um, of course they knew no different. Uh, we used to give them a huge onion to chop at first. <laughs> you didn't give them a little one, you know, it's size of a, of a like a small melon. Okay, so I'm gonna put those onions in there. Um, and then I've got my 
roast garlic um, to go in as well, which is roasted so it will all break down just nicely. And I'll turn it down now to number six just to stop it burning. And just put a little bit more oil in there. Because always on needs a little bit of oil. Now bring my stock over. And this takes about roughly, you know, 15 to 20 minutes to cook. Probably not that long. 15 minutes. So we're going to cook our oils or get our oils all ready. And then pop our sea bass in because... We can hold the orzo, but we can't really hold the sea bass. So I don't want to cook that before I'm... So, orzo is going in now. And I always put a pinch of, uh, of salt in now. Okay. So, that, that always, for me, is important when you're making a risotto or orzo like this. Because this is a sort of orzotto. Sort of. And then I'm just going to put a drop of white wine in. Put your thumb. There we go. Right. Thumb over the top. Okay. And now I can perhaps turn it up to seven. Because, it, you know, it's a lot safer now. Now we've got the liquid in. And I'm going to bring up across this pan here because... I can cook off um, my pods whilst we're cooking the orzo. So I'm going to put that on number seven. Just let that heat up gently. Just be careful because, of course, you're blind still, so there will be a little bit of water on there. So be careful with that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop them into that, that dish there. So I'll put, a, I'll put some... Uh, kitchen paper in there to absorb and watch again because I'm saying that it's uh, it's safe but it does stick so be careful so I'm wanting to eat notice when I put wine in any acidity when you're making sauces or you you're doing anything like uh, a risotto I always burn off all the alcohol so reduce that sauce right back and then you can start the process now put the stock in And just gently let that work down. So while we're doing that, one of the things I'm going to add towards the end, I don't want to cook the, the spring onions too much. A bit of those on there. And I'm just going to, again, wash those leaves as well. I'm going to take those outer leaves on because I'm just going to go for the more succulent lettuce leaves and the heart to go into our orzo and let's just sneak back to our orzo okay so let's have a look and we'll cut those nice and chunky Bottom, like so. And then the top. Just in case, just in case there's any chance of having. Well, that sounds like our Roizo wants a stir. So, again, more stock in there. And then. These will all go in towards the end to make our orzo a super, super dish. Okay, there we go. And lettuce leaves, all I need to do with those is just to pop them into a pan. Uh, Or 
water and then just pop them on there and let them drain nicely. Just give that another stir. With the mint, pick your leaves. Okay. Mint and peas. Marriage made in heaven. Huh? And then just... I'm going to chiffonade that, so... And see. I mean, it's quite a rough chiffonade. You know, chiffonade can be a lot finer than that. But for this particular case, it, it doesn't need to be. Okay. And that's plenty of mint. So... Right, these... Um, before we, we can just pop a little bit of olive oil into them. I don't know what these will come out like, but it's worth worth the go because uh, when we did them in the pubs, they were really special. We used to serve them with a little garlic dip, like a garlic aioli. Yeah, really good. Mind you, some people try to eat the pods. These these actual pods so that wasn't a good idea so we'll pop those on there and then they're ready for going in um, and I'm going to try and uh, fry off our pods there's, there's more than enough there but they actually they actually make a nice snack So we just need to fry those off till they're golden. And again, keep your eye on your orzo for sticking and make sure you scrape right down to the bottom. Because what you don't want is to get a burnt flavor going through, obviously. So, before I burn these, I better get them out. And there they go. So the orzo now is nearly ready. And you can smell that. Can you smell that? It's still, a, even though it's like induction, it's still a bit hot. And we were just laughing there that you got the smell of the cedar planks. Okay. So without further ado, we can take our sea bass and pop it onto. cedar planks and they've had about 15 minutes okay and um, the great thing about this is you can serve these in the middle of the table and just help yourself you can put a piece on or you can put it all on if you want and the skin sticks onto the cedar plank okay so we're going to go and put these into the barbecue now. And I'm going to turn our orzo down. So it will just give us a little bit of time now to pop. Okay. Okay, and here we go. Let's go to the barbecue. <laughs> um, and we've got our monolith barbecue here. And it's set at uh, 150. All right, and I just want to pop it. Sorry, 250, not 150, 250. Um, there you go. That's going to take about between 8 and 10 minutes. Okay, so we'll just leave that as it is. Okay, better check to see if it's ready, the barbecue. So it's 10 minutes now. So let's have a little look. Oh. Oh yeah, it's just cooked is that. Um not sure about our broad beans, but we'll see <laughs> we'll see about that. But that'll just need a little bit of time to rest now. But wow, does that look good. Now you can serve the sea bass, just put it in the middle of the table and just help yourselves. 
we're going to plate one up so we're going to put some of the sea bass on the top okay so first things first let's get that lettuce spring onion and peas and broad beans need to go in now So we're just going to break that lettuce down in our oils. But, we, you know, that takes a matter of a minute or two. I'll just pop a little bit more stock in. Don't need much. We haven't got much stock left there, but we've just got enough. Okay, so as I'm working that in now to make our oils a super, super dish. And we don't want too much cheese. I might just might just try and get a little bit more in. I'll cut it. I'll cut it up because it's just as as every good Lancashire, it's crumbling. Okay, so we'll just put that little bit more in, but I don't want to overpower it with cheese. So you know we're probably putting um, about fifty to seventy-five grams of cheese in there in a minute, and I can just check if I think I need a little bit more in. Right, what I do need is a little bit of olive oil. And that's in there. And then I need my spring onions and my mint. So that's all going in now. So they're the spring onion tops. Okay, gosh, I can smell that. I can smell that cheese. Okay. Mm. There we go. Okay, so I need to turn it up a bit now. So I'll chance it and put it on number eight. I'm going to finish off with a little bit of butter. And hey, just a little touch of butter in there to finish. And the last of my stock. And then I need to just check the seasoning. Mm. That's really delicious. Okay. So, let's get a portion of our ozo out, pop it there, and then we'll take some of the fish and cut along the natural line, I can just get a little bit of this side of the fillet here, you can see it's just, I'm saying just cooked. And just prise that away now, really nicely. And just put a piece of fish on there, and a piece on the other side. Just like so. And, you know, then you can put some more on later, or whatever you want to do. And here, just to finish off, I'm just going to pop a few of those shells. Don't put too many shells on because they, <laughs> they are quite challenging to chew. Um, and then just a little bit of your oil. And that's, a, you know, a really casual dish that is absolutely delicious to eat. Thank you from me, Nigel Howarth. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Nigel Howard. If you like what you've just seen, then subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on social media. Enjoy.